welcome back beautiful people I just wanted to talk more about my nursing experience and go back in time to when I was a fresh high school graduate starting my freshman year as a collegiate volleyball athlete and also even really just focusing more on my whole nursing journey so in 2016, I graduated from high school in, I think, May. I felt like I had everything under control. It was more, it was going to be a fun time. And it certainly was, and I just didn't expect what to happen in four years of what happened. But I'm, I'm super excited to share this journey, and I wanted to give a little bit more history about me and how my nursing experience went. Obviously, it's going to be a little bit different than what I actually encountered in school just because it's been four years since I was a freshman in college. And it's going to be fun kind of reminiscing, preparing for this vlog. I've been trying to remember as many things as possible because four years goes by really fast and so many things happened during that time and been fun to just think back on how much I've grown and how much I've experienced in my four years at the Midgey State University. My freshman year I came in undecided but I knew I wanted to focus more on the healthcare as I have a lot of interest in healthcare. I just didn't know if I wanted to be a PT or an OT or if I wanted to go pre-med and get go in my master's program or if I wanted to be a nurse. I had no clue what I wanted to do. So I took a lot more of like the pre-PT, pre-OT classes my freshman year and I just wasn't lost. It. I had no clue what I wanted to do and what I was learning in my classes just really wasn't hitting well for me. Freshman year I was able to make a lot of friends on other teams and some of the soccer girls were doing nursing classes and I loved what they were learning, I loved what they were doing and how they were studying and it just seemed like more of a community that I would blend well with. So second semester I decided to switch from my undecided pre-PTOT classes and do completely nursing. Because I switched in the spring semester from, from pre-PT slash OT to nursing, I had to take anatomy and physiology in one semester. And this class on campus is known for being the hardest class on campus. I believe it's six credits. It was taught by the hardest teacher on campus and it was super well known. It was uncommon for a freshman to take this class as it was more of a junior, senior level class. I definitely realized why. Being a nursing student, usually you take two semesters of anatomy and physiology because you can break down each body system and go more in depth and you're able to learn more versus when you take one semester of anatomy and physiology it goes by really quickly and you're not able to dive in as much as you'd like to especially when you're going to be become a nurse and work the front lines. Because of taking anatomy and physiology in one semester I had a lot of long nights especially as a freshman in my second semester I gained a lot of friends and a lot of my friends were going out and partying on the weekends and having volleyball commitments and wanting to just let loose and have fun on the weekends really wasn't an option for me. I was so focused on getting a passing grade in this anatomy and physiology class. I spent every Friday and Saturday night usually in the library or in my room studying my flashcards. Oh, I think I paper cut in my forehead trying to cram as much information in my brain as possible so that I would be able to pass the hardest class on campus. Freshman year, spring semester, my studying habits and techniques were not good at all. I met a friend, she played soccer, that was also taking anatomy and physiology, and she was a sophomore. Super smart girl, straight A's, 4.0, all-star on the soccer field, and she was taking this anatomy and physiology class well with me. And I looked up to her greatly. She was successful in sports, successful in school. That is what and who I wanted to be. So I followed her and how she studied, which she was a book reader. If you know me at all, I do not like reading. I don't even like reading fun books, so why would I think that reading an academic book would help me understand anatomy and physiology better? Well, despite me knowing myself and that I don't learn by reading, I still read the book. But because I know that I don't study by reading the book, this hurt me in the long run. Because of myself looking up to this girl as a mentor and as a person who I wanted to be, I took her study habits and tried to make them my own so that I would have the success that she also had. And this ended up hurting me in the long run. Although on a positive 
even know, I ended up getting a B in the class and the way that I earned a B was I showed up every single day except for the days that we were traveling unfortunately. I worked my butt off in the lab and in class. I also would meet up with the professor during his office hours to go over content that wasn't making sense to me. Something that I forgot to mention is freshman year I also had to catch up on taking pre-nursing classes like chemistry, lifespan and development, but along with some lib eds that I needed to complete to graduate. Overall, freshman year was really, really challenging, not only because it was my first year of college, but also I was trying to balance a collegiate sport and taking these very difficult classes my freshman year. Okay, so enough about freshman year, let's move on to sophomore year. I thought freshman year was pretty tough, and I remember it because of all of the diversity and the challenges that I faced during that year. But sophomore year was honestly such a blur. Okay, so let's start off in the fall of my sophomore year. I'm going on year two of playing collegiate volleyball. And this year is also the year for the nursing program where you apply to get in. When applying to the nursing program my sophomore year, I believe, or at least what I remember, it was based off of three things. A test, an interview, and your GPA. With the test, we took a HESI test. The test was similar to an ACT where it had four categories, reading, math, science, and then an anatomy and physiology portion. And during that test, we all sat in a computer lab that was supervised and you had to take the test with no notes, no calculator and nothing. Everything that you had was resources that were given to you through the computer program. The second is your GPA. I believe with the nursing program, or at least this is what we were told, is that they were looking at your cumulative GPA along with on what grade you got in anatomy and physiology. I felt a lot of pressure at this point just because I had taken the harder anatomy and physiology course and I felt like I didn't earn a good enough grade for the nursing program and I was super anxious going into it and I didn't know if I would actually get accepted or not. The third thing was a group interview. For the group interview, we had to dress business casual and come prepared. We didn't know any of the questions that would be asked. We knew that there'd be a group of 10 to 12 girls or people applying to the nursing program. My group was all girls. I was super, super anxious. You wanna stand out. You wanna have your words put together. You wanna know your story. You wanna know why you wanna be in the nursing program. And for me, at this point in my life, I really didn't know why I wanted to be a nurse. I believe I told them that I always had a dream of being in the healthcare and I just didn't know what I wanted to be. So nursing was just kind of my plan at the time. So in the interview, the process was, they asked every single person in the group two questions. I believe the first one was why do you want to be a nurse and the second was something personal and tell in a story and then there was a list of questions on the board and so after everyone in the group went around and said their two the answers to why you want to be a nurse and whatever the personal question was you got to pick two other questions to answer that were on the board now this is hard because it's different than having a one-on-one -on -one interview or a three-on-one -on interview with your professors because you can really open up in front of your professors and and trust that what you said in that interview stays confidential. Although when you have a group interview with all of your peers, you have no clue if someone's going to be judging you or based off what you say or do, how they are gonna think of you. And at this time in my life, I really, really wanted my peers to accept me and I really wanted to be accepted into the nursing program despite not knowing very many people in the nursing program. So another class that we took in the fall semester of our sophomore year was an introduction to nursing. So in Intro to Nursing, we talked a lot about Florence Nightingale and other entrepreneurs in the nursing realm who really changed what nursing is today. So it was really cool to understand the background of what nursing is and be able to say names and have philosophies that are specifically for nurses. I honestly can't remember what other classes I took besides Introduction to Nursing my sophomore year of the fall semester. I think I may have honestly taken a introduction to Native American music or something like that. I felt like my the sophomore year fall semester was an easier semester than the previous semester of freshman year spring, but volleyball was also giving me a lot of stress and anxiety. I felt like I had more of a leadership role on the team and I was getting pulled in so many directions and nursing was definitely not the number one priority at this time. So after the interview process and taking the test, it took 
took the nursing program about a month or a month and a half to get back to us. And how they got back to us was through a letter in the mail. I ended up getting my letter in the mail. It was sent to my college home and I was really excited. After getting the letter of exception in the nursing program, we went through a nurse pinning process. And this was actually something that I felt was super honorable and it felt like I actually achieved something. This was also the turning point where reality struck. You felt like you were actually going to become a nurse and like these were your goals. Wow, that really sucked. So after getting accepted into a nursing program, there's this thing called nurse pinning. My mom came out and supported me and she was able to see more of the nursing lab and she was able to watch me step on stage and get my nurse pin. Julie Touche. you'd sign this class of 2020 nursing board. So now the beginning of sophomore year, spring semester, we are actually taking legit nursing classes. It's been so long since I even thought about take what classes I took sophomore year, fall semester. Oh, it was fundamentals. Okay. I gotta know. So sophomore year spring, you started to take actual nursing classes. And so the first three classes that I took was pharmacology, health assessment, and then fundamentals of nursing. Pharmacology was a very difficult class for me. It was taught by a professor whose first language was not English. It was also structured very poorly. On Fridays, you would take a test and this test would only be about 15 to 20 questions. You could tell what questions or what type of medications would be on the test because our professor would star the PowerPoint. Once you figured that out, it was super easy to just study what you needed to know to pass the test. And you weren't really utilizing all of the information that you need to feel successful or feel confident in the pharmacology world of nursing. That definitely has hurt me now. I've gained a lot more confidence throughout even just my practice just from seeing the medication but I wish I had a different professor and I wish I had put more into pharmacology when I was a sophomore than I did back then because now it really is hurting me and I, I don't feel very confident at all practicing. But it's growing and I know I'm not alone. There are some nurses who got their bachelor's degree in something else and decided to become a nurse and took an accelerated program and they didn't even have a pharmacology class. So I'm thankful that I was able to at least have a pharmacology class and get some foundation, but overall the class did not benefit me as much as I would, would like it to have. Health assessment was also a very difficult class. Health assessment went through every single body system and what to assess, how to diagnose. It really just nitpicked every single disease or infection or anything. It just went through everything and anything and it was taught by multiple teachers. Every teacher had a different testing style so it was really hard to study and prepare. Fundamentals of nursing was also very similar. It was taught by more than one teacher, but the fundamentals of nursing was a lot more of hands-on experience. We did a lot of med passes. We did a lot of medical calculations. So calculating um, how much of a medicine to give if you're giving a partial dose. We learned how to insert a IV. We learned how to do a head to toe assessment. We learned how to insert a catheter on a male and a female. Touche, and this is my catheter um, insertion test out. So prior to entering the room, I would gather my Mars, make sure I have the right patient, the right room number. I would also gather my material needed, and I would um, grab an assistant to help me with the catheter insertion. Um, I would knock on the door, close the door, provide hand hygiene. This class was definitely one of my favorite sophomore year just because it was more of that hands-on nursing, which is what I really liked about nursing was that I could get my hands dirty and that I could help people. Yeah. 
a part of me feels like I really skimmed by sophomore year. Um, I had a good group of girls to study with, although my study habits really still weren't very beneficial to me. I was kind of reading the book, kind of skimming it, just to say that I read the book. And then I would also take notes on my PowerPoint slides that I printed off. I'll actually show you how I did my PowerPoint, printed off my PowerPoint slides in a format that was that allowed me to take notes on. This is an example of our health assessment PowerPoint. And as you can see here, there's a lot of content, 55 slides down here, and that is a crazy amount. Around this time, this is how I would print my notes for class. I would go to file, print, and then this should pop up. And I don't wanna print like all the 55 slides individually layout this is where you want to take a look so a handout style two that's two slides per page i think i did three i would toy between two different styles this is the first style of printing that i did i definitely started out this way but i didn't like the lines because i just i wanted to write more than what the lines gave me and my and then my handwriting was too big to like fit in the line so that was my first option but i loved I think it was this is the one that I did more often just because I could utilize all of the side pages and then I could correlate slides that went with the other pictures as well so yeah and then all I would do is I'd print this in color or black and white depending on where it was but now I just turned a 55 slide PowerPoint into a into 10 pages and something about me and my OCD is that I would I could never have my slides back to back uh, it would always have to be on one paper because I would three hole punch my slides and put it into my binder and if I needed more space I could flip the page and write on the back um, or say if it was on page two I could write on the back of page one about page two if that makes any sense so yeah, that was the way that I, oh, here's black. That is the way that I um, would print out my slides, either handout or handout with six or handout with three. Both were very helpful, um, but later my junior year, I had a different way and I'll show you in the next video. Although this way of studying really didn't help me. It was definitely repetition, which is what I needed. Having that, being able to write down under the area of the slides really did help me. But overall, this I wasn't very successful. At this time, our nurse program was struggling a little bit and it, we were getting noticed that our NCLEX passing rates weren't doing very well. So at this time, we had to average, I think, above a 70% on all tests, which was very manageable. That's a C. And I thought that if you put in, if you show up to lectures and if you put in a little bit of effort, that this was doable. But it is different in the future years so stay tuned. Sophomore year was also a big year for me personally. This was my first year living independently or out of a dorm and not in my parents house either so this year was definitely a room for growth and how to cook and how to clean and just being able to be independent while also having roommates and balancing roommate life and volleyball and school like I just felt like there was a lot on my plate and I juggled it actually for very well my sophomore year. I was able to go out and have fun with my friends on the weekends. I was able to spend time and study. I was able to show up for volleyball and give all of my effort and energy towards that. That's really sophomore year in a nutshell. From applying to the program to having your first three classes of nursing be very big and influential like pharmacology, health assessment, and fundamentals of nursing. It would definitely was kind of difficult, but it's it was manageable for me. And yeah, but that was sophomore year in a nutshell. Nutshell. <laughs>